Welcome to this tutorial on the data view in Quantum ATK's NanoLab. Today, I'll give you a quick tour of the new data management features and show you some tricks to use it effectively. We tend to generate a large amount of data when working with the Quantum ATK project, from atomic structures, aka configurations, to calculated material properties. These data are all presented when you first open NanoLab in the data view, which comes loaded with tools to help you organize and analyze these data. The table or catalog at the center of the window contains data items, which are typically the contents of the various files in your project. Basic item information is sorted into columns to tell you things like which file, or more generically, which location an item comes from, the data type, item name, and timestamp of last modification. You can customize your view by turning columns on or off from the column settings panel and also see or adjust the column width. As a tip, you can double click the column dividers in the table header to quick adjust a column's width to show all its contents. These contents are all searchable using the search field at the top of the data view. This can be used much like you would the search field of a search engine in that the data view will filter its results to any items that match the search query. And as you can see, you also don't have to type the full names of things. There's also the ability to browse your files from within NanoLab using the built-in file browser at the bottom right of the window. From here, you can select files in your project and the data view will filter on the contents of the selection. Of course, mass selection by holding shift and crop selection by holding control is also supported. Any search you put into the search field can also be saved as a filter for later use. You can find these at the top left of the window where there's already a set of predefined filters for convenience. To create a new empty filter, click the button above the list of filters, or click the Save Current Query button next to the search field to do just that. Be sure to give your new filter a good name, and if you make any changes to the search query that are meant to persist, remember to hit the Save button. To apply a filter, hit the little arrow on one of the filters. All changes we've made thus far with the filters and also with the column customizations are saved with the project, and so will be available even between sessions of NanoLab. So that covers basic navigation in the data view. Next, we'll take a look at what we can do with the data items. Whenever you click an item in the data view, you can get an immediate preview of what the item contains in the panel on the right side of the window. For instance, a band structure item posts some basic information about the Fermi level and band gaps without having to present the full band diagram. You'll get different types of previews for different data types, and not all data types have a preview. Most often, you will simply open an item by double-clicking it. By default, this will open the preferred analyzer, but there's also an option to open with in the right-click menu, where you can choose a different analyzer that is appropriate to the item. The preferred analyzer can be changed by opening the Analysis Preferences dialog, which can be accessed from the Open With menu, but also from a button in the Preview panel. If multiple items are selected by holding Shift or Control, you can also open them all at once by using the Open option. The multiple item selection is reflected in the Preview panel, and the Preview will display the first item in the selection. It's also possible to use the Open and Open With options at the bottom of the Preview panel, where you will also find a quick access to a simple text representation for data items and the previously mentioned analysis preferences. Certain data types have a nested data structure, such that they contain additional items that can be unpacked. In the data view, these are identified by their type icons having a small folder at the bottom left corner, such as this MD trajectory item. The option to unpack is also in the right-click menu and opens an additional panel with the unpacked items. Interaction-wise, these items are no different from those in the data view, as I can demonstrate here by visualizing some of them in a data plot. Naturally, you won't be able to find them from the file browser, and they also cannot be searched for directly. To make things easier, we can always add keywords to the parent item, which are searchable. For instance, this MD trajectory was created with some additional measurements, so we can note that down as keywords, and now we can use that to find the item. The keywords can be edited freely, so you can annotate your items with whatever additional information you need. But you'll notice that some data types, like the MD trajectory, already come with auto-generated keywords that you can add to. 
Let's move on to some of the more advanced features of the data view. A powerful ability of the search field is that it can accept SQL queries. As such, your query can be written in very detailed ways if you're familiar with the SQL syntax. The search field comes with auto-completion suggestions for SQL commands while typing that can be applied with the tab key. There's also a query builder that helps you to create a search query in steps. You can select to AND or OR together different search criteria and select how, where, and what for to search. For things like the QID, which is a long unique string that identifies the calculator associated with the data item, it can be cumbersome to type the whole thing into the search field. For this, there's the option to refine the search from the right-click menu, which appends the search query for the QID into the search field. Refining can be done on any column. If you at any point create a search that does not produce the results you wanted, there's always the option to undo and redo. This functionality applies to both edits in the search field as well as any filter operations. Sorting items based on a column works like in any other table. You can just click the column headers to cycle through the sorting options. But as you can see, it can also be written as an SQL command. Conveniently, this also means that the sorting can be saved to a filter. When you have collected and collated all your data and would like to create a summary for your project, there's a powerful tool located just below the data view. The report tool allows you to create research protocols that batch perform different types of analysis on the data currently filtered in the data view. Here we have a collection of band structures and configurations for different materials, and we would like to compare their band gaps in a single table. Clicking on Generate Report opens the report tool in a new window. In this case, we have a previously defined band gaps protocol that we can use. If I select it and hit Apply, I can see the different types of measurements this protocol will perform on each of the data items. You can select, depending on the data type, different things to include in the final report, such as the lattice properties for configurations, different calculator properties, and also different analysis properties. Now we'll speed this up with a video. And you get first a tabulated report on the analysis where you can verify that everything is in order, and then go to the visualization page. From here, you can create customized plots based on the report data and save it. Then after some tweaking of the appearance of the plot, we can get a nice visual comparison of all the band gaps for the different materials in our project. We are nearing the end of this tutorial. So I just wanted to mention that Quantum ATK supports exporting data to a variety of different file types, including a new HDF5. This can be useful, for instance, if you want to break an item out of another HDF5 file, such as the builder stash, or to separate an unpacked item from its parent. And that's it for this tutorial on the data view in Quantum ATK's Nanolab. I hope you found it informative, and thank you for watching.